Yeah, that is, you know, really uh, the plan of action. And this, this, by the way, this, this pullback on the dollar, I'm expecting it to be quite deep. Yeah, I am expecting it to be quite a deep one, um, depending on obviously the currency pair. You know, it could be, you know, hundreds of hundreds of pips because we've had a massive, you know, trend on that dollar. So I would expect, equally expect a very deep uh, pullback Yeah, that could last and that narrative could last for, for, for several months. But ultimately, if, you know, the, the data supports the narrative that, you know, these guys are heading into a deep recession, yeah, sooner than the US, then it's a case of just timing your dollar entries, because then it will be the dollar will be a potential buy at some point. Yeah. So planning out the next, you know, six months, this this is the this is this is my plan of action and so um yeah any questions on that oh by the way sorry it was uh, uh alexandra says uh correct me if i'm wrong didn't powell mention that they did not want to repeat of the mistakes of what they did in the 80s so can you be more specific so what happened in the 80s that he's referring to in terms of they don't want to repeat of that if you, you can turn on your mic if you want alexandra yeah I, I just did yeah, um, yeah. um in the 80s from um what i i read on research that mm -hmm. they hike and from hiking cycle, they went back to cutting. And then because they noticed the mistake, they went back to hiking again. Okay. So this was, this was a mistake that they, they did not want to repeat. But right. this is, this, my main question is asking about this because the reason it's exactly from what you're mentioning, you say a dollar pullback. Um, it, it is obvious that the, that the dollar is, is gaining strength. Not because as we can see, the results are uh, easy. Uh -huh. Like the... the the dollar, the Euro, US is not uh, still a strong currency or strong country. Mm -hmm. More in demand compared to other countries around around the globe. Absolutely. So, um, um, why, like, why? Okay, I can understand the pullback because, but for why that long? Like, why would you say six months? Like, I, I really want to get around this. Like you say, six months or a deep pullback because we had a really bad. Wouldn't this be more looked at as a technical term or? As a fundamental term, like with which, what logic do we say that it might pull back to six months? I would say, I, I, I don't know about, I don't know if I said six months, maybe three to, yeah, maybe three to six months, who knows? And I, the only reason why I'm putting that timeline in, timeline, timeline in, sorry, let me get the words out, um, is to kind of manage your expectations of what the pullback may look like, right? Now, um, these things do take time. In terms of remember fundamentally um you know we're looking at medium to long longer term time horizon so the reason why i would say um a pullback of maybe you know three months to six months is because there could potentially be um the narrative that you know once the, the fed start to you know trail off um and the ecb is still hiking the um uh the uh bank of england is still hiking is that remember the data tends to lag so we don't get you know the first quarter data until um the second quarter we don't get the fourth quarter data until the first quarter so when i say three to six months it may take three months or six months in that in actuality to confirm you know that europe or the us or, or say the us or, or as a matter of fact all three of uh, of these countries are actually in a recession Right. So let me just explain that again. So it could take remember it's two negative quarters to confirm a um, a recession. And so if, you know, two quarters is three months or a quarter is three months, two quarters is six months. So the narrative. Yeah, I'm expecting the narrative and I'm not trying to forecast it, but I'm just trying to adjust my expectations and your expectations that if you start to see a deep pullback come, a pullback could last for months yeah on on the dollar right so when i say three to six months i'm throwing it out there but also from the perspective of um uh just adjusting our our timeline in terms of how long we may want to you know short the dollar for example could be one month right and these things can change we have to be dynamic i'm not saying this today you know, and that's going to be it set in stone. Of course, things change automatically, but I'm preparing for these things. And if I start to see the evidence show that these things are occurring, then I've already mapped out the plan. Yeah. Rather than trying to react 
to these things that may or may not happen. So when I use, you know, six months, six months is probably more of the extreme end, Alexandra. So from that, from that perspective, maybe it might be a bit far out. But at the end of the day, I'm prepared for a dollar pullback to last for that long. Because how many times have we seen, um, you know, uh, price just continue to fall or, or continue going higher? And everybody's scratching their heads and saying, oh, well, you know, the dollar should have turned brown by now but you're maybe two weeks or three, three weeks into, you know, a certain cycle where, you know, remember that all the banks want to buy the dollar or they want to sell the dollar, for example. And these things can take months to play out. So that's the reason why I have that timeline. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but I have the six month timeline, maybe more on the extreme end, but maybe probably three months you might get, you know, two to three months you may get a dollar pullback. That's just, you know, just, that's just the reason why I'm explaining that time. How would that make sense? Yeah, kind of makes sense. But the thing is, basically, fundamentally, so basically, if there's any dollar pullback, it will be mainly due to over expensive um, 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 US dollar because it's rich where it's rich. But um, fundamentally, we've also... Um, seeing that the dollar is, is in that position because it's it's like we said the dog with the least fleas or at least compared to to um euro great britain um if any country which um, um does have a, a strong economic right now but even though they're, they're first um starting to cut rate not sorry to hold rates mm-hmm. would be australia but australia um also being a commodity one of the strongest commodity currencies is being affected because of its risk of environment. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, basically, so it'll be more more of a um, um, a pullback due to a dollar being expensive. So this 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 will be one 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 of the main reasons. You you believe? So are we, we, we are we shifting to Aussie dollar now? Because I was, I was no, no, no. Just in general, in general, like I'm just, I'm just yeah, comparing, I mean, yeah. so, 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 I'm comparing yeah. the two. But like, like the dollar, like for a fundamental reason for a dollar to have a pullback, either one month or three months mm-hmm. in the environment that we are, we, we're, we're surrounded in right now because we're in a strong risk off environment. Mm-hmm. Yes, things may shift. Things mm-hmm. slowly, slowly look like as if they may shift. But mm-hmm. this is a may with a question. But leaving that on the side. Looking at the at, at the at what's what's being presented to us, and like like uh, I still believe the dollar is a very strong buy, but yeah. So what do I. reasons? So do I. What reasons? What reasons? Like fundamental will be for the pullback. That's 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 what I'm trying yeah. to find. Like and, and that's what I explained because of the of the dovish pivot, right? I just I was I was just saying I know I did kind of deleted it, but I was saying because of the dovish pivot. Yeah, the dovish pivot, what we typically know about fundamental analysis is that the, the central bank that it tends to hike rates, yeah, should be the one that you should buy. And the one that is not hiking rates, yeah, is the one that you should sell. Look what happened with the Australian dollar recently, right? They started to dovish pivot and look what's happened to the Australian dollar. Yeah, obviously, alongside the fact that we are in a risk off environment, but the Australian dollar, once they, you know, adjust their expectations, the market has to now revalue what that interest rate hike or the, the, the lack of interest rate hike, the value of the Australian dollar versus other currencies. Hence the reason why you've been seeing, you know, the Euro Aussie, for example, you know, start to go higher, right? We were talking about this, right? The reason why I didn't take that trade and I, and I said, to, you know, I said, I'm not taking it. Yeah, I'm not taking the Australian dollar. The reason why is because, of the dovish pivot, right? So there's 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 a lag that comes in. Yes, I understand that the the Australian dollar is economically better than Europe and best likely to 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 um to weather the storm in terms of you know recession etc. But these things take time to play out within the market. There's there's positions have to be unwound. Positions have to be built, and this is not positions from just one institution. This is from hundreds of you know thousands of institutions all small big etc right and liquidity has to be created as well these things take time these can take months <laughs> for, for these things to to um to uh to, to to play out right so the point the point i'm trying to make is this all right i said that um i said that right the six month thing might be a bit of a you know a stretch yeah but 
from the perspective of dollar strength, yeah, you can't expect, and if you go, you know, back through, you know, uh, all the data um, from, from years, decades, for example, right, whenever you get, you know, large moves, and I guess maybe look at this from a, maybe a weekly perspective, right, it gives a better perspective. When you get a large move like this, without there being much of a pullback, yeah, eventually, you will get a deep pullback. You will get a deep pullback. And, you know, if you look at, for example, certain forecasts, forecasts will generally, um, you know, over the long term, uh, are predicting that the, um, you know, the dollar should want to pull back, right? So maybe one to, you know, three months, you should start to see maybe some sort of, you know, 111s, but then you start to see prices pull back, maybe six to 12 months. Again, not to say that it, this is exactly what's going to happen, but you can see pullbacks occur right where the dollar has to be revalued because the dollar is less likely to go or i won't say less likely to go higher but if they start to hold rates yeah doesn't mean that you know the dollar's gonna uh, or how i put it just because um you know one country is hiking rates over another doesn't mean that um always mean that we're going to get you know a you, you should buy this currency over this currency because at the end of the day as i said it all depends on the economic standing of that currency and that and, and that country. So I think there will be a revaluation of the dollar once we start to the Fed start to um, come to the end of their hiking cycle first. And as that starts to happen with the Bank of England and the and and the ECB still hiking rates, there's going to be some sort of you know residual effect from that. Yeah, while banks start to adjust, right, and grab liquidity, etc., and that could result in you know either a slow pullback, it could result in a sharp pullback. Nobody knows, but if you take this low to this high, yeah, you're going to get a pullback. You're going to get a decent sized pullback, yeah. And so, because we haven't had one for what since, if you're looking at what May 2021, right, we have not had. If we look, if we're looking at this technically. And I don't really like to be driven technically, but one of the things that I've, 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 I know is that whenever you get a trend, at some point you have to come back to fair value, right? So if we, we know this to be an absolute low, yeah? And so let's do the fib tool, right? And so what we want to, what we want to look for is a, a pullbacks to, um, to, to fair value, yeah? So just imagine that we're doing this. Right. At some point, prices will always pull back to fair value, always pull back to fair value, whether it's a ranging fair value or an auction fair value, which is what we do here, or whether it's um, a moving fair value or the moving average fair value. They will always come back to a fair value. Right. So we've just seen this strong move here. Yeah. And there's been no pullback to 50 percent. Remember, just and just keep in mind, this is a weekly chart as well, yeah? So there's been no pullback. And as we go higher, yeah, as we go higher, fair value obviously moves because this becomes, this is still a bargain price, but this becomes, you know, either expensive or it's not, right? Depending on whether prices go higher or lower. But this, you know, 50% of this low to whatever the high is, is the fair value that you're looking for on a decent pullback. So anyone who hasn't, you know, got involved in this, is now looking for a pullback, yeah? So, or at least a fair value. So let's go forward, yeah? So let's go forward. Uh, I'll just speed this up a bit. Uh, right. Da, 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 da. Actually, let me do uh, the read time speed. All right, so it still hasn't pulled back. We're gonna move this up to here now, yeah? So it hasn't pulled back to the 50% yet. We made new highs. There, that's the new high. Still hasn't pulled back to fair value yet. Start going higher. Still hasn't pulled back to fair value. So this is the new height. Back down to the low. Still hasn't pulled back to fair value, hasn't done a decent pullback yet. And it hasn't. 
and it won't. And this is a weekly chart, right? New height. New height. Right, to where we are. So it makes sense. It makes sense for me technically and fundamentally, yeah, for price to, for the dollar to want to pull back to at least somewhere around the fair value because we haven't done so for, you know, over a year. May 2021. And we're heading to 2023. So technical reasons why we want to have a deeper pullback, but there's also fundamental reasons as to why, you know, we will get a pullback. Yeah, but this may be more technically driven. Who knows? But the point being is that, is there going to be a period where you want to get short on a dollar? Yes. But does that mean that because it comes down to here? Yeah. Does that mean that, oh, we're, we're you know, it's, it's a reversal on the dollar? Absolutely not. It just means that the smart money who had a bigger picture perspective, you know, a higher time frame perspective, we're just looking at buying the dollar, right? Because they understand that hopefully at this point, Wherever, well, wherever prices come down to, it might not come down to fair value, but the, you know, wherever it comes down to, and that represents a deep pullback, at some point, the narrative is probably going to change to say, all right, then, well, are we focused more on GDP or are we fo focused on recession? Because at some point, the pound, yeah, right, the pound, GBP, and the euro are also going to do what with their with their interest rate hikes what are they going to do with their interest hi hi hikes eventually nope they're already hiking so what are they going to what are they eventually going to do hold right and if two central banks are holding then what then what are you going to be what divergence what metric are you going to use to this, uh, determine whether you know you want to buy um the uh, a certain currency so we've already said it like pretty much a hundred times gdp right that's exactly it who's in the recession and who's not and so that when that moment comes and the dollar pulls back and everyone has the realization that okay well you know we, we we've, we've made enough money on the uh, on the interest rate narrative right divergence narrative now europe and and the uk are not hiking rates now all of a sudden you've got you know europe and the uh, and and the uk right in a deep recession but the but the us now is not in a deep recession they, in fact they're looking to come out of their recession sooner or they were they're in a shallower recession so then now that becomes the divergence right that then pushes the dollar higher this pushes the dollar down based off of Dovish divergent, dovish, um, uh, you know, a hawkish pivot, also oh, a dovish pivot, right, for the dollar, right? But what revaluates the dollar then becomes the narrative change between the economies. Because who wants to buy the UK or into Europe or, Euro or European economy when you've got the US? And that's what this is basically saying. This, this, this article is saying, who's going to be the first to, to 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 be the um to to get themselves out of um you know a recession who's best placed to weather the storm i'm just walking through what i you know what i see on a price chart and preparing i guess myself and you guys as to what the trade ideas are likely to be so I'm just going to read uh, Ken's comment. Ken says, I think it's also going to come earlier than we see due to investors seeing the data earlier and the market is forward thinking and will then price that in as they see it. I think as soon as we see the core inflation starting to come down um, and that's when it's uh, absolutely. So and that's really the trigger. You know, we were talking about this last week, Fed, you know, the Fed pivot will be triggered really by inflation. It has to be. 
triggered by inflation. So Ken's absolutely right. We could see it sooner. Maybe, maybe not. Even though 